So it's five minutes until two o'clock. I am itching to get outdoors. It is such a beautiful fall day, but there was too much to do indoors up until now. I'm about to be free to go out there and go on a nice walk. But I wanted to share our school morning with you. I know a lot of you ask me details about how we do school and what we do for school. It's definitely hard to explain. This is our eighth year. It's kind of like clockwork at this point. I can be flexible. I can switch things up last minute. If we don't get something done today, I'll do it tomorrow. If we skip a day, we'll add to the next day. So it's just kind of flexible. But even with our flexibility, I still have a lot of structure. I have specific subjects assigned for each day and I reserve Friday as our like field trip day, free day, play day, and also rollover day. So I'll just tell you what we did today. Uh, we read 2 Peter chapter 2 and some Proverbs in the scriptures. We did some note taking for our um, history timeline card, which today was the act of supremacy which talked about Henry VIII and how he convinced the parliament to let him be the head of the Church of England because he needed that divorce with Catherine of Aragon. So we read the timeline card for history, but we also wrote a bunch of notes from the timeline card as their copy work for the day. Then we did ma a math sheet each. So that was 20 problems each, including adding decimals, adding fractions, which is all review from last year. We're only on the fourth week of math book. So um, it's a little bit of review and starting to add things on and several word problems. We did our chapter on our audio for history, Story of the World Chapter 4. And let's see, we... That's all that they did. Then I am having them read uh, individually through Columbus. They do like three to four pages a day. They're also reading one section a day of their Christian Liberty Nature Reader, as well as a story a day from 50 Famous Stories Retold, which I think that's, that was left in the bedroom and a chapter a day from the case for christ so 50 famous stories retold and case for faith for kids so they're reading all four of those books a section from each of these four every day until they're done and then i'll assign probably another two books i did four to start just because i really wanted to get them in a good rhythm of having to read by themselves things that I'm assigning every day. When they're done with these four, I will probably have them start reading one chapter of this every day, Columbus and Sons. So far, I'm reading it to them, but since they're already reading this, I'm gonna wait till they're done with these and then I'm gonna hand this over to them. And I will probably work our way through all these books that we've got. I'm reading them Shakespeare. I'm reading them The Yearling. This is our literature book for the year, or for right now, till we're done with it, and we'll get something else going. I'm reading them Whatever Happened to Justice and Ourselves for Citizenship. Uh, and I think that the rest of this stuff I may assign for them to read for themselves as they finish, just go on to the next book. So that's gonna leave their next Christian Liberty Nature Reader. Um, and then these are all literature books that I intended to read together depending on, I don't know, because I really do love reading literature with them. So we'll see what happens with that. But I do intend to get to the library soon. I have not been very good about getting to the library to get some Renaissance uh, books since that's our time period just for fun, uh, even though we're probably getting plenty of information on the Renaissance with what we have here. It's just fun to get other books that don't belong to us to look through pictures. And I really love cooking uh, and learning about the food of uh, whatever time period we're doing and making some cool dish. So we'll probably make a meal, a Renaissance meal at some point. But that was our school day. Uh, it took us three hours and now I'm gonna go on a beautiful walk outside and whoa, 
It's very bright. <laughs> okay. Well, all I gotta do is switch the laundry first. So I'm starting to do chores. I need to stop myself and take advantage of this hour of a free time that I have. I'm going outside. <laughs> I see clothes that needs to be hung up. I see this thing that needs to be put away. It's like, stop. I'll do that in an hour when we all have to come back in and regroup and finish off some tasks before we head out for errands and dentist appointments. I want to enjoy this hour. So putting the cup down and going outside. So today is Wednesday. It's like 9.30. I am taking my sweet time this morning. I woke up like at seven, which is later than my usual, but I think I really needed to rest. I slept so hard last night. It was amazing. Yesterday was Tuesday and we started co-op with eight other families. So we had a great day. We left here like around 9.30. I made a big skillet of cornbread with hot dogs mixed in. So like a big corn dog, healthy, healthy version of a corn dog. And I took some mustard and ketchup for topping and all the mamas brought food. So we ate there after class, but we did a fun co-op. I got to teach six through eight year olds and then my second class was nine through 12 year olds and I did physical fitness. So we talked a little bit about why it's important to exercise, how the Lord can use us when we're healthy and strong and why we should exercise and discipline our bodies. But that physical fitness profits you nothing in eternity and so what we really wanna pursue is godliness and we talked about those things and we did a little workout and there were some other classes. Someone, I think Joel got to do healthy eating and the human body and Ivan got to do campfire cooking. So super fun, we have some other really fun ideas coming up in the next few classes. We're only meeting twice a month, which is very practical for me. If it was weekly, I don't know if I would have done it. It's just a lot and so, we were gone till like four. We had a great fun day and now today is a home day. Well, actually no, Ivan is starting a shop class that I signed him up for today. He's going every Wednesday for the next three months. I think he's doing carpentry, plumbing, and electric this first semester. So super exciting. Uh, he'll go at two o'clock. So we have until 1.30 to finish our school day. And I wanna show you what I have planned for our school day. Today. So I'm in the classroom and the boys are feeding the animals, making their beds, getting ready to come in here. So I'm just gonna look at our list for Wednesday. And I'm gonna combine yesterday's stuff that we missed to today's. So we just read the Bible. Um, we did, we finished second Peter check. We're going to do copy work. We're going to do cursive. We're starting a new math lesson today. We always do literature and their reading. Yesterday we missed Shakespeare. So I'm going to add that to literature. We also missed citizenship yesterday, and today we're doing geography. So I'm gonna add citizenship and geography. So basically, basically we read Bible already. I don't know what I'll do for copy work yet. I kind of decide that on the moment. Um, we are still, gonna read for they will be reading those same four books as yesterday for their free reading time i am reading shakespeare the yearling the world of columbus and sons a chapter from this whatever happened to justice and a chapter from ourselves i always read last so we will probably do it in that order. We like to do our bookwork in the classroom first, then we'll have lunch, and then we'll just read either outside or in the living room and just enjoy that. So for cursive, I have this curriculum, prescript cursive words and drawing. I just was given this by somebody. It's Bible verses in cursive. That's the one Joelle uses. And this I actually bought at a at the homeschool convention I went to um, for Ivan. So that's the cursive I use. We use Matthew C for math, and we're actually starting a new 
lesson this week. So we will have to watch the uh, DVD lesson for the day. And then we'll come back to the classroom. And usually when we start a new lesson, the math for that day is a very short. We'll just do one worksheet together on the board, make sure we understand it. And then starting tomorrow, they'll do their own worksheets with my help, of course. And that's everything. So the only thing I really have to decide is what we're going to do for copy work today. And besides that, that's what we'll do. So they'll come in here. They'll do their cursive, they'll do their free reading, we'll do our math, we'll do whatever I decide for copy work, and then we'll probably break for lunch, and then I'll read all of these books. And we will call it a school day. <laughs> That's Wednesday. So it's like 7.30 and I forgot to tell you guys what we were doing for school today. It's Thursday. It was a great day we woke up kind of early we started school earlier than usual because we had to leave here at noon to go be at my friend's house where we played this awesome flower sock war it was fantastic we were there for like two hours hung out played with the homeschool community had some snow cones that my friend's children make and sell and then we met up with some other friends who could not be there to walk at the local university so super fun had some birthday cake with them because one of their little boy's birthday was this past weekend and so they saved some cake to partake with us. So it was a very fun day. But as far as school went, today was our last day of school for the week, Thursday. I try really hard to finish the school week in four days so that we can enjoy a Friday off. But on occasion we have some rollover stuff and that's fine. We also do field trips on Fridays. If we're gonna do a day trip anywhere, that's the day I prefer, but obviously we can be flexible. So today we did Bible. We actually started 1 John because we finished 2 Peter yesterday. So we read 1 John and some Proverbs. We used 1 John as our copy work. So we, I had them, actually I did it as dictation. So I dictated it and they wrote as much as they could without help. And then of course I helped them when they needed it. Um, then we did math. They each did a math sheet. We did picture study and composer study. We don't go very in depth with picture study. We just look at the painting for the week and talk about who painted it, uh, talk about the painting and point things out about it and move on. I just really want them to be exposed to art and classical music. So we do the same thing for the composer. We just play the music throughout the day and they become acquainted with it. And um, we read, of course, literature and we did science today. So for science, we bought this new curriculum. It's one lesson a week and I've really been enjoying it. It's called um, The Good and the Beautiful. We're doing space science for the first 14 weeks of school and then we'll do marine biology for the ne the next 13 weeks after that and then we'll be done with science for the year so i'm pretty sure that's everything we did and then they had their free reading and that's it so that was our school day it took us like two and a half hours we were done by 12 30 we were a little late to the friend activity but they didn't start till after we got there so we didn't miss anything and Tomorrow's Friday and we're off. So that was a full school week for us. Even with co-op on Tuesday, we were able to do everything that we set out to do with the exception of probably one less math lesson and one less writing lesson. Everything else was accomplished. So I feel fine with that. In the beginning, when we had first started, I couldn't afford much of anything. So I literally would pay for the annual umbrella school fee and go to the library and utilize as much free stuff online as possible. Free audiobooks, free books that I could read out loud. Um, library, I went every week so that I can get the books I needed for the curriculum. I followed amblesideonline.org, which is a Charlotte Mason style curriculum and I followed the outline. So there was a time where I started to not use the resources suggested there. 
I was editing the video and I saw that I didn't complete my thought because Hector called me and when I went to finish the video, I didn't share where I was going with um, what I was saying about AmblesideOnline.org. For the first for the first, second, and third year, I followed the curriculum and all the resources that they listed there pretty closely for, for the first three years. By year four and on, I started to omit a lot of their suggestions and pool in my own resources, but I still follow the outline, like the um, time period, the timeline, what biographies we were going to cover, what science topics we were going to cover, things like that. So it was very helpful and it still is very helpful. But at this point, I pretty much pull all my own resources. We're in year eight now and we love it. Of course, I always check the literature suggestions and I always check the books and I check with friends who have done Ambleside ahead of me to see what they thought of certain books and to determine based on their opinions what I'm gonna do and not do. This year, I think I did Ourselves and Whatever Happened to Justice. Those are all part of the curriculum uh, this year. But I think a lot of the other stuff is just my own stuff, which works for us. You got to find what works for you. That is the key to homeschooling is your number one goal is you're teaching the love of knowledge because you can't teach your kids everything. And one day they're going to be out on their own and you want them to love learning so that they will go and pursue knowledge, right? And you cannot make school fit your life. You have to find something that naturally fits your life. So it is okay to do what you got to do to make it work for you and your family. We're all different. There's not one right way. It has to be something that's natural and peaceful. And if it starts to be horrible and just torturous for you or everybody else, if it's not your attitude that needs to be checked and corrected, it might be the uh, curriculum or the style you're, you're going for. So it is okay to tweak and and take things out and add things in as you see necessary. So be encouraged. Don't give up. It took me about four years to feel really, really comfortable and really, really confident. I'm not saying that I won't freak out again in two years, but the last four years have been so fantastic. And I think it's because we got in a really good groove. I finally learned myself, my approach. I learned how to tell when we needed to take the day off or when we needed to wait or hold off or be flexible when we needed to say we're doing too much or we're trying to do too much you learn as you go it's a journey for the whole family and the beautiful thing is that you will see the gradual accumulation of everything you're teaching your children come to fruition and flourish you think you have to put in eight hours you don't three is plenty it slowly, gradually accumulates through the years. I mean, I always say better is to teach for this long and your kids to grasp everything than to teach for this long all day and your kids to grasp this much. I mean, seriously, it's just better for everybody. So I hope, so I hope that this video has given you a little glimpse into how we um, have homeschooled. There have been things that we used to do that kind of tapered off through the years. We used to do poetry memory. We used to do scripture memory. We used to do a little Spanish. We used to do more in-depth composer or artist um, biographies and stuff like that. We used to do spelling, but I feel like all these things either were just not naturally working for our family or they caught on in a different way and we, we could easily leave it behind and continue uh, still learning, but not necessarily having to have that subject isolated. So I hope that makes sense. I also, of course, do educational field trips, educational movies and documentaries, and we do co-op and we do a lot of things around our home and in our family and as a family that I think totally prepares them for life in this world and um it's fun it's fun for your education to be your life so i hope this video was helpful to you inspiring to you and answered some questions that a lot of you have asked me of how we do school what does a typical day look like for us what does a typical school week look like for us um to be honest there is no such thing as typical ideal yes but typical i feel like it's always different which is Fun. It keeps things mixed up, you know, not my natural tendency. I am very much a mundane, rigid, structured, scheduled person, but my kids are not. And so 
I'm not going against like my natural tendencies so much that I feel stressed out all the time. I still have structure and order and schedule and routine, but I deliberately am flexible and loose where I can be so that they don't feel like it's too intense, you know? I hope that makes sense. God bless you guys. See you next time.